So welcome everybody, this is the video for section 13.2, which is inference for two proportions. Sorry it took so long to get this up. Uh, in section 13.1 we talked about um, problems about related to two means. So in section 13.1 we did over here and here in our kind of big tree. Now we're going to talk about problems involving two proportions. So now we're looking at confidence intervals for two proportions and hypothesis tests for two proportions. So I'm going to do one example of each kind. Um, this very much relates to the notes we uh, handed out in class. So here we go. So there's a big problem. It's the one on your notes. I'm not necessarily going to read it right here, um, but it's pretty clear it involves two different proportions because look, we have one proportion here and one proportion here. And then the question says, does they support the claim that attending preschool makes it less likely that you would need social services? So we're talking about P1 minus P2, the difference in the proportions of those needing services. And when you do these problems, make it really clear which way you're subtracting. In this case, I'm doing group number one minus group number two. The null hypothesis, if there was no difference, then you would subtract the portions and it would equal proportions, it would equal zero. It's always going to be this for these kind of problems. And you've got to think over here, is this a greater than, a less than, or not equal to? Well, because the way I subtracted up here, number one is more likely to use services, so therefore P1 minus P2 when you subtract, we'd expect P1 to be a bigger number than P2, so it's greater than zero. Again, I wrote this here. Some books write it like this. Our book is a little bit inconsistent which way it does it. I'll always write it like this, but if you wrote it like this, that would be fine also. And then we name the procedure. It's a hypothesis test for the difference of two proportions or our calculator calls it a two-prop z-test, or something sort of like that. Okay, the conditions get a little bit crazy here. There's three things to check, but it's a little bit of a pain. So first, we assume that both groups are simple random samples. I think we can kind of safely assume that here. Now, there's basically, for, the, um, for it to be normal, there's four things we have to check. We used to just check N1, we used to check NP and NQ. Now it's N1, P1, N1, Q1, N2, P2, P2. N2, P2, and N2, Q2. Before, we used to check if they were bigger than 10. Now the kind of rule becomes a little bit different. Now we just have to check if they're bigger than 5. Turns out most of the time they're bigger than 10 anyways. Um, so I did that all. I checked all four of these things. And notice this ends up being 49 because these cancel. This ends up being 12 because the 61s cancel. This tedious number here is a 38, I think. I can't even read my own handwriting. This is a 14. So they're all bigger than five. So now we are at the so the sampling distribution of, and now it's p one hat minus p two hat, not just p hat, is normal. Um, as far as uh, independence, you want to check that um, the population is ten times the sample size, which clearly here the populations are everyone not attending preschool and everybody attending preschool. So those clearly are bigger than, you know, ten times sixty one and ten times sixty two. But for all of these double problems, whether it's uh, two means or two proportions. You have to also just kind of logically say, are the groups independent of each other, right? The 10 times the sample size is saying, are they independent within the group? We have to check that and also, are the groups independent of each other? Both conditions are met here. Okay, before I move on, we have kind of two formulas. Oh, I forgot to write something here. This is, should say hypothesis test. How exciting. Get to see me make a correction. Woohoo! Uh, so we have um, two different formulas for standard error for this. It's the only case where the, the standard error formula is a little bit different when you're talking about confidence intervals or hypothesis tests. For confidence intervals, we use this hideous formula. For the one we're doing right now for hypothesis tests, we use this formula. The P, C, and Q, C stand for the combined proportion. The C stands for combined. And basically what you do is you throw both groups into the same pot. So P hat combined is the total number of successes in both groups over total size of both groups, and you'll see that in the next slide. So I'm going to use this formula when I'm doing this problem. And here we go. So here's our formula for um, hypothesis tests or two proportions. Z equals statistic minus parameter over standard error. And the standard error is exactly what I wrote on the previous slide. I made a little mistake here, and I wrote a plus. I just corrected it. So P1 hat is 49 over 61, P2 hat is 38 over 62, we subtract those. Then minus, this is always zero, because think about that's what our null hypothesis is saying. Okay. Then on the bottom, I calculated P hat combined, it's just 49 plus 38 over 61 plus 63 gets us 80, sorry, 61 plus 62 gets us 87 over 123, so that's what I put here 
for p hat combined, right? p hat combined, p hat combined, p hat combined. q hat combined is just number of failures. That's just going to be 36, okay? And then 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. You crank this all out, you get a z score, because this is a z score of 2.32. Hint, hint, I did not actually do this. I used my calculator. And then we drew our normal curve. This is not a t curve, it's a normal curve, so we don't need to write degrees of freedom anymore. Um, and our z score of 2.32 gives us a p value of about 1%. So then our last our paragraph is exactly like what it was before. There is about a 1% chance of getting a... Now, this you always write the statistic here. So our statistic is P1 hat minus P2 hat, which is this minus this, which is about 19%. Make sure in the beginning of your, of your first sentence you refer to the statistic. So there's a 1% chance of getting this specific statistic or more due to random chance if P1 equals P2, or you could write if P1 minus P2 equals 0. Since this is unlikely, we'll reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence that attending preschool makes it less likely to use services. Again, I'm trying to do my last sentence in English. And then symbolically, it would also be P1 is greater than P2. Okay. The hardest part of the whole thing, I think, is the conditions are a little bit more of a pain. And the um, formula is a little bit of a pain. But the calculator kind of does it all. Another thing that's a little bit of a pain is just making sure you recognize, we have all these inference procedures recognizing that it actually falls into the category of two proportions. I think it's kind of easy for these because, hey, you've got two proportions, right? Um, just a little bit here. I obviously did not do all that math on the previous page. I used my calculator. You can go to two prop Z test. Then you just enter in X1, N1, X2, N2. Remember X and N, just a little bit of a formula here. P1 hat is equal to X1 over N1, right? Same thing for P2 hat. It's a real common mistake under X1 to write the percentage rather than the number itself. Okay, then going to do that, go to greater than, because that's what the problem is, calculate. And if you look here, hey, look, here's the z-score, and here's the p-value. Okay, then down below it actually calculates, this is a p1 hat, this is p2 hat. It actually also calculates, it says just p hat. They don't put a little c here, but that's what this is. This number is the combined proportion. Okay, and there's other numbers down below. I think it just tells you n1 and n2. Okay, so pretty easy if you do it on the calculator. Okay, I want to just quickly do one problem involving confidence intervals to show you the difference. This is a confidence interval problem. It's the same one that's in your book, or sorry, in book and in, in your handout. So P1 minus P2 is the difference in proportions of those who feel vulnerable to crime. And it's clear you say which way men minus women. Okay, um, I'm going to try rather than using 1 and 2 in this one to use M and F for men and male and female, okay, or M and W could have done. Um, I, I actually am not super consistent in doing that, but I tried to. Um, so just kind of going from the problem, you realize that the proportion, the sample proportion of men is 46 over 65. The sample proportion of women is 27 over 56. And then we label this one, we say what it is. It's a confidence interval for the difference of two proportions. Or in my calculator, you can say it's a two-prop Z int. It's an int now. You still do need to check your conditions. It's exactly the same as what you did on the previous page. So I'm not going to do it for this particular problem. But yes, if you were doing this one for homework, you do have to check your conditions. Yes, you have to check your conditions. Yes, you have to check your conditions. Okay, so here's our formula. Um, statistic plus or minus critical value times standard error. Same for all confidence intervals. The statistic is p, um, p hat m minus p hat f, okay? Plus or minus, critical value is z star. I should have written this with m's and f's, but I didn't. I did p1 hat, q1 hat over n1. Really, th these ones should be m's, and these two should be f's. But I, that, that's the formula, okay? p hat m is this, p hat f is this, plus or minus, I got the critical value by doing inverse norm of 0.975 like we used to in the old days. Then just plug in everything. We know this. That's 46 over 65. We know this. That's 19 over 65. Just, you know, 1 minus this. And 1 is 65. And so on for the women. And I just kind of crank it all out. Hint, hint. I use my calculator. And I get this. Okay? So our confidence interval is about 7.7% to 41.8%, which is a huge interval. And then we just interpret things. I am 95% confident that the difference in the proportions of men and women who felt vulnerable to crime 
is between 7.73% and 41.8%, which is a fancy way of saying, if you think about it, that men feel more vulnerable to crime, right? Because since your entire confidence interval is a positive number, you're 95% confident that men feel more vulnerable than women, okay? Um, and so, but yeah, the, but the interpretation, the last paragraph is easier for confidence intervals here, clearly. Just quickly on my calculator, 2 prop Z int, you plug in the numbers. Um, again, X and X should always be integers. Actually, all these numbers should be integers except for the confidence level. And then it kind of cranks things out. It tells you P1 hat, tells you P2 hat, and then this is actually, so actually I did, it's much easier to do this on the calculator than to actually plug in all those numbers. I believe this is zero on your calculator. And that really wraps up um, chapter 13. We have just a little bit to go, and we're kind of done with the year. Way to go. Woohoo!